We're almost there. The PGA Professional National Championship is just in a couple days. We got Thomas Campbell here, competitor in the event. He'll talk us through his final stages of preparation. And if you haven't yet, make sure you catch up on the series, Road to the PGA with Thomas Campbell on our YouTube channel. Like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka and participant in the PGA Professional National Championship here in just a few days. Uh, we'll be televised on Golf Channel as well. Uh, so Thomas, you know, well, this is what, video 11 of the series, but I know you've been prepping for months and months on this. Uh, we're down to the nitty gritty here last couple of days. So um, before I know there's one kind of item you wanted to touch on here in this video with regards to maybe the clubs in your bag and um, you know, maybe the gapping as well, but preparation for a tournament like this, uh, I know you've already flown down to Texas and played the courses, but when you get down there at this time and you're getting ready to prepare, getting ready to play, what's that process like? What do you need to do to kind of check off on your list? Yeah, I flew down for two days, um, especially being in Minnesota. I have not hit off grass since October 4th. I kind of, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got a golf barn, which has been great, but it's not the same. Right. And I definitely noticed short game is going to mm -hmm. be key. So I'm going to get back down there. I would fly back down on the 13th, okay. um, which is the, uh, the Wednesday before and the event starts on the 17th. Okay. So I'm going to get three practice rounds, actually possibly four practice rounds before I tee it up which is going to be great, and I'm going to be heavily focusing on short game when I get down there. Okay, yeah, because short game, I know I know that's the thing around here too with the winter. You know, there's facilities in place, your own facility, to work on the long game and, and you know, hit the full swings, but, like, the, the putting and the chipping can be difficult to work on. And so I know that, like, I can totally understand why that would be a big part. So talk about maybe the schedule then. I know you talked about all the, the – um, practice rounds you're going to play and schedule, but how about the short game practice too? Is there like a, a number of hours you want to put in or maybe a cadence to your each pre preparation day? Like, you know, you know, practice, then play or play, then practice. How do you think you're going to do that? Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely spend a lot of time on the greens working on the speed. Now we're talking about Bermuda greens. So mm -hmm. it's not just, not just band. So you figure out where the grain's coming from. Sure. And I'm going to be working really hard on trying to get my speed right. And um, that's going to be my priority. I've already played a practice round on both the two courses that we play the, the championship on, so I kind of have an already a good idea of what to hit off the tee, um, but when I'll be playing those practice rounds, I'll be hitting a lot of shots around the green, I'll drop a lot of balls, mm -hmm. I'll hit some putts on the, on the green to where I think the whole location, location is going to be, and I'd say majority of my practice rounds are going to be focused on that, because let's face it, my swing's good, my swing's been pretty good yeah. for the last few well, months, yeah. nothing's changed except the fact I'm no longer hitting to a screen, I'm hitting outside. Right. That's when you've got to control the ball flight. Your wedge game's got to be on point, and your up and down game and around the greens and, and potting's got to be really good. And so, have you in these practice rounds you've already played? Have you started to formulate a game plan for each course? Or are you going to kind of maybe hone that in when you get there for the week, maybe in those couple, few days leading up to it? I have. I mean, depending on where the wind direction is coming from, I already know what I'm going to hit off the tees. Okay. Um, I when I was playing my practice rounds, I had my range finder with me with the slope. So I'll be shooting every single shot that I hit off the tee, every single shot I hit in the green. Sure. Know the elevation. So I've written that down in my notes. That I know that, for example, say hole 10 is up five yards. So I know when I'm standing in the middle of the fairway on that hole, I've got to add five yards. Right. Um, so I already know that. I also use my phone. I use the Arcos golf system as well. Mm -hmm. um, that was basically identical, which I think was amazing, that technology. So it would tell me in feet what the elevation changes are on the holes. It's a lot of holes there that um, the tee is quite high up or the next shot's going back up the hill. And we're talking 80, 90 feet, which is it's a so lot. That's significant, so it's, yeah. So it's making that hole play 25 yards longer or shorter. Sure. Yeah, so that was great. That, that was useful to have that. Um, and also kind of wind direction. It was telling me kind of where the wind direction is. And it was windy down there. So I'm going to obviously need to know how to flight the ball. Luckily, coming from New Zealand originally, playing in Minnesota in the spring, I mean, it's, I'm pretty good at yeah. playing in the wind. You'll yeah. be, you'll be yeah. well prepped for windy conditions. And I imagine being in Texas, there will be a breezy day or two as part of that tournament. So yeah. uh, I, I, I know, again, I, I've seen the, the, the lengths of the work that you put in. And so I know now it's been tricky finding time to work on the short game, hopefully. I imagine that's, like you said, a big part of your process here. And with short game being said, I know one of those last items you wanted to kind of accomplish in preparation was your wedges. 
And so, you know, there's maybe some gapping, maybe some yardages you want to nail down. What are we working on with wedges today here? Yeah, I just wanted to put myself under a little bit of a pressure situation. So I wanted to go through what my nine o'clock and my 10.30 swing and my full pitching wedge yardage is with so 60, 56, 52 and pitching wedge. I want to really dial those numbers in. So okay. I kind of want you to you know, obviously be, be here, you know, telling me, hey, you've got you know, this club, what distance are you trying to hit that club? And I want, want hopefully I'm pretty close to that. Okay. Because when I get outside, I almost want to be on point so right. I can have shorter putts on the green. Okay, good to know. Well, let's, let's get started here. Let's hit some wedge shots and we'll see really how dialed in you are. Sounds good. All right, well, Thomas, a long while back, you did a video on the channel about dialing in your wedges and how you can use the clock system to do that. And so that's still something you use in every round and every wedge shot that you play, essentially. So uh, I know you wanted to kind of start with pitching wedge, maybe, and we'll work down and, and basically you want to get yourself dialed in. Right, and I know these numbers for the most part, but I actually want to create myself a little sheet document mm -hmm. that I can give my caddy and I have in my back pocket. That way I just know if there's any doubt, I can always revert back to it and say, well, when you were hitting, your nine o'clock swing was going this right. far, your 10.30 swing was going this far. Okay, and so I think it's actually probably a good idea to, for maybe the viewers that don't know or you know, don't understand what the clock system is, like maybe explain to them quickly what you know, nine o'clock swing means, what 10.30 swing means. Right, so the only wedge that I hit a full swing with is my pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. So my full swing, obviously, is full swing is pretty much parallel. Yep. Um, if you are looking at what nine o'clock is, and it doesn't have to be exactly here, it's more of a feel. Yeah. So as long as you know what your distance is when you take the club back around about here, as a nine o'clock on the, on, the, on the clock, obviously the, this arm would be nine o'clock on the clock. 10.30 would be mm -hmm. here. So I have two different yardages there that I know the ball goes a certain right. distance with each, each club. It's gonna flight different, it's gonna spin less, it's gonna fly lower or yeah. higher right. or spin more. It's essentially a way of you know, creating you know, eight different wedge shots for your bag. If you have you know, pitching wedge 50, 54, 50, whatever you have for your gapping, um, it can create different clubs based on the, the shots. Right. So. And your wedges are your scoring clubs, you gotta know this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing this, and if you're a half decent player, you're going to be a much better player. Right. If you start using like a clock system, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, okay, you got pitching wedge here. So, your goal here today is to get dialed in. And so, like for example, your full pitching wedge swing. Are you just trying to basically hit that number right now? Yeah. One forty. One forty. One forty is my carry distance with my pitching wedge only. Okay. Well, let's yeah. let's let's hit one forty. We'll start with the first full swing, and then we'll get into the nine and the ten thirty. We'll find out what all my yardages are with my wedges. Ooh, a little far. Been working out or something. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that pretty good. Yeah. I don't know if I could hit that any better. I feel like one two seven is a pretty darn good smash for a uh, pitching wedge. All right. All right. Well, let's bring this up here. So I'm gonna put that. Like, you can see the map, pretty good dispersion. I mean, you're pretty consistently with those four swings hitting the same number. Yep. But if we expand the table here, we can kind of look at numbers wise 144.6 carry on average. Plus or minus 0 0.8 yards. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Spins about 8,000. Mm -hmm. Usually I spin a little bit more than that with pitching wedge, so that's probably why it's going just a little bit further sure. overall. Um, but Maybe not hitting down on it as much as sometimes I, I do. Um, you see my attacking was only negative 2.2. Mm -hmm. But the good news is it was consistent with the swing that I was swinging today. Right, yeah. right. And so with that said now, do you go on, want to go down to 1030? Yeah, let's do the 1030. That? Okay. Let's do the Because maybe the gapping matches up then. I mean, maybe, yeah, if you gain four yards or whatever with your pitching wedge, that's right. probably okay as long as the distances still match up with the rest of your shots. So. Yeah. Yeah, in the past, uh, about, about 130 yards has been my 1030 swing. Okay, 130. <laughs> Just flushing it. It's going too far. That's smash. Well, I mean, I think you're a little bit, you're just a little bit further with uh, both swings yeah, so far. Everything's going about five yards further, mm -hmm. it seems like. Mm 
Yeah, I mean, I would probably take that first swing out. That was the one that I think carried mm -hmm. 141. I might have jumped on that a little bit more. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, you had a little extra speed on that one. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's 136. Yep. It's that's, I mean, that's still, that's that's, the, that's kind of the gap you're looking for though, right? Right, I, I was mean, looking for about 10 yards, okay. kind of gap. Um, what was that, about nine? Yeah. yeah. So we look up the map here, or excuse me, the, the table here, and you see, you know, that it gets eight yards essentially of distance there yep. between your full and 1030. Is that kind of what you would expect, at least at the pitching wedge? You know, because you have that range, I guess, covered right now. Right, and then nine o'clock, I would guess, would probably be another 10 yards shorter. Yeah, another as well. 10 yards, so you're kind of thinking, mm -hmm. You know, based on this anyway, probably yeah. in that 125 to 130 yeah. range. And normally it's 120, 125 would probably what we see today. Okay. Yeah. So like 9 o'clock for me when I'm hitting 9 o'clock, it feels like, you know, I'm pretty close to here. It feels like I'm not quite touching my, sh my chin with okay. right, right my shoulder. That's my, that's my feel for 9 o'clock. So like right here is going to feel like 9 o'clock. It's almost like a trigger when you almost get there. You, yeah. You just if I, if I know that I'm... I hit my chin, then I know I've okay. gone a little too far. Of course, I've gone too far. I'm just flushing it right now. Look at that <laughs> shot, though. Look at the numbers on that one. Uh, I mean, that's dead straight. There you go. And, it's, and, and watching you do this, it's almost like you had, like for you anyway, you have, when you bring it to nine, and then the club is almost perpendicular to the ground, it seems like. It's almost straight up. Like this? It's pretty close, yeah. Okay. Just from this vantage point, anyway, yeah. it's pretty close. That's probably got a little bit of a hinge there. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it just feels like I'm not quite hitting my, or I'm just maybe brushing my chin, barely. A little bit heavy on that one. Yep. Yeah, so I'd probably okay. take that last one out. That was a little bit chunky. Yeah. I know, we'll do that. So what we have then is this map here, if I can. Let's change that to carry distance here too, let's just see. Yeah, I, I know you're more worried about the carry distance, but we got, yep. I mean, we got a lot, a big range covered here with pitching wedge essentially. Yep. And then we can look at uh, the table and you had that kind of high 120s. This is, I think, a little bit what we expected there. I know you caught um, one pretty good at the beginning there, which exceeded 130, but then the other two were in about 125-ish yards there. So you have eight yards in between each shot here, which I think is kind of what you were looking for. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping for 10. So mm -hmm. I'm, I've got a couple more days here before I do fly, fly down. I'm probably going to really, real dot, really dial in my wedge yardages and just you know, see if, it's, if I'm swinging just a little too hard or if I'm taking that club back a little bit too far. Because at 9 o'clock, Pitching wedge, 128 carries. It's pretty far for me. Is it? I mean, normally it's 120. So okay. Um, hopefully that's not the case all the way through, and hopefully I can get closer to my normal numbers that I'm going to see. But yeah, about five yards too far. Okay. Yeah. So the good news is it was consistent all the way through. Right. Right. It's yeah. nothing. Uh, there's no major gaps there. And I also yep. you also noticed that the spin went down a little bit more with that nine o'clock swing. So there's it's shot type too that goes into it. You know, right. you're, you're it's. There's, if the wind is involved, you need to keep spin low, keep the ball low. That's where these different swings can come in handy, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, right. I hit a lot of nine o'clock swings. You can see the, between the nine o'clock and the full swing, it's flying. What's that? Twenty. That's thirty-five feet lower than the full True. swing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even see that. That's yeah. that's actually pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, fifty-two degree wedge Let's now. Let's go fifty-two. Is that the next one. And I don't usually hit a full swing with my fifty-two. Um, so we'll just do 10, 30, and 9. Oh, okay. We're, we're skipping the full swing here. So okay. you're skipping well, that's the full swing. Just because you yeah. never really do it? 10, 30 is almost full swing. Okay. Really. And I, the only time I'll ever do a full swing with my wedges is when I go hit above a tree. Oh, sure. Otherwise, it's just... Because then you really got to launch it. You got to spin on it. I'm trying to, to control the bull flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. One twenty. So that's 121. What are you thinking is generally your number with this shot? This is a 1030 swing with your 52 degree. It's about 125 usually. Okay. So it's interesting that one definitely spun a lot more than what I was spinning that pitching wedge. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I might have to check the loft on my pitching wedge because <laughs> it's, it's gone pretty far. Pretty, pretty close again. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Let's bring it up. Yeah. 
you got that 120 shot covered. I mean, yep. 120 yards is your... So 121.0 was the average. Yeah, you're peppering that number. And then I've, looking at this chart here, yeah, I mean, 120, 1.0 technically, but 120 yards and uh, got that 90 feet in the air. So you kind of, yeah, 1030 swing is, with both clubs now, has been pretty close in the, the height. And uh, I mean, one thing though to note is that spin really jumped up getting an actual wedge in your hand versus right. uh, an iron with the set, essentially. This seems more realistic. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little concerned on the distance that pitching wedge is going. So I will probably have to run into second swing and check the light yeah. in the loft out on that pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it's, I mean, you gained about four or five yards with each pitching wedge shot and you, this is exactly the number that you were expecting with the 52 degree. Right. This is more consistent here with regards yeah. to that 10-yard gap. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you. So you're kind of expecting about 110 here? Yep. I think we're peppering flag sticks now. Right. You're going to do the wedges and you're all over it. Luckily, I had a lot more, have a lot more wedge shots from 80 to 120 rather than <laughs> that. That pitching wedge is concerning. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm thinking about that while I'm hitting here. Just a little further. Yep. All right. Basically, a 110 average. Yeah, you got a 110.2 average with that one. And then we can bring up dispersion. Again, really good dispersion circle. We're nice and tight there. And then we'll bring up the table here. 110.2. Right, let's spin drop a little bit again. So here's the 10:30 and the 9 o'clock there. So you can kind of see how that that trend seems to be the. The shorter the swing, I guess, is the lower the spin, lower the height, lower yep. the launch, et cetera, all kind of trends together. Yeah, the nine o'clock's great if I'm hitting into a little breeze or I've got a pin in the back where I'm not trying to fly it all the way back and spin it. Mm -hmm. I usually, usually don't ever like to spin the ball backwards. So I right. like to have the ball land and release to the hole. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, so we've, you got, I mean, with that said now, with the 56 degree, do those, are you thinking like 100 and well, 100 yards now or 105 yards? Or what are you expecting here from like the 1030 swing with 56 degrees? Well, my nine o'clock with my 56 is spot on right around about 100 yards normally. Okay. About 110, but probably a little bit different full flight. That's probably what I'm gonna see with the 1030. Okay. Yeah. Maybe just a little further. Yep. You are, I mean, once again, you're hovering around that 110, like you said. Should be about 110. There you go. So here's a question for you, Thomas, as we you know, bring up that dispersion. Those two shots we just hit, well, that you just hit, are the same dispersion, essentially. Yeah. I mean, look how close that is. <clears throat> so if you've got dead calm conditions, um, basically a flat, you know, terrain, like you're not going up or downhill, which of those two shots do you prefer? I still prefer the nine o'clock, there's less can go, less can go wrong. As okay. I mentioned with the 1030, I was actually a couple of those swings, I was actually spinning the ball backwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anytime that green's a little bit soft, it's gonna spin back more. Now if the greens are really firm, maybe I'd lean towards the 1030, so I know it's gonna okay. stop. So it really depends. I mean, what you can do is you pull up those track my numbers and just look at the difference in the height between mm -hmm. the two of them and also the spin between the two of them. That would probably be the interesting look, thing to look at. Right. So looking at the blue and the green. So you can mm -hmm. see that we're talking the ball flying 17 feet higher with the 1030 yep. swing. Um, but it, notice that the ball is basically stopping on a dime. With the nine o'clock swing, it's releasing out three yards. Yep. So it depends on what type of shot I'm trying to hit. Where the okay. flag is, if I've got a front pin, probably gonna go with the 1030 swing. Mm -hmm. Back pin, probably gonna go with the nine o'clock swing. Okay, yeah, interesting. That's, uh, that's something to note. It's funny how something like that doesn't even cross the amateur golfer's mind ever, you know, and they have, most golfers have 52, 56, maybe it's 50 and 54, have a series of wedges in their bag, and they have probably just had the one yardage for maybe 100 yards with this wedge, and then 90 yards with this wedge, or 85 yep. with this one, but the way you're able to do that, you have two different shots that you can hit to 110 yards away, and so is that now when you're on the course, maybe you've got a par four, that's 400 yards, are you trying to hit yourself to a spot where you have 110 yards? Or maybe is that one of your kind of go-to spots? 
for sure it, go, it comes into the planning, uh, a little bit more on longer par fives. So okay. if I'm laying up, oh, I'm going mm -hmm. to try and lay up to my favorite number, which is about 100 yards. Okay. Um, also, it might depend on where the pin location is. So on the tee, I'll look at the, at the pin location sheet before I even get up towards my, my third shot. So actually, the, day, the morning of, when I get that pin location sheet, I've already looked and I've already penciled in where those, those pins are so I can know where I'm going yeah. to chart myself. Okay, yeah. interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, all right, now we're at the 56 degree. Let's go nine o'clock. Yep, and this should be around about 100 yards. Maybe just a little short of 100. Yep. Just a little bit. Interesting though that you're still getting roll out with that one. Yep, a little still less spin. Extra two yards. Get closer. Yep. That one's really good. I mean, I'm just thinking on a 100 yard shot right there, you landed at about five feet short of the hole and it trickles out to about the number, so. Yep. And if you look behind you there, I've got a chart. I've got written down 99 going 100 is what I would normally hit this shot. Just a little short, maybe. Yep. A little bit. A little I mean, bit. that's getting really picky with that one. <laughs> if you're leaving it a yard and a half short that it rolls out to yep. just over the number. So we got 98.4 going 100.3. So mm -hmm. pretty, pretty close to what I'm used to with my, my averages. Okay. Then I wanted to bring this up too. There's your dispersion circle. You had that one that was a little short right away, but otherwise the rest of them are right on target. And then again, we'll bring this back up. That, it's funny how I'm just, the spin is fluctuating a, a lot and with these shots, just because different lofts, different, different swing lofts. types. Yep. It's, it's all gonna kind of go up and down a little bit. But that one, you, you seem pretty dialed in on 100 yards and you were saying that was, that's your favorite distance. You know, you have a couple shots for 110 yards, you also have a couple shots for about 100 yards. Yep. Yep, 100 yards is kind of my, my goal to 9 o'clock swing. Mm -hmm. yep. And then uh, with that said, I'm sure we got 60 degree now. I'm yep. sure the 1030 is probably around 100 yards too. It's just a little under. Okay. It's, it's, we're talking 80 to 90 is usually what oh, my really? 60 okay. is. Well, it has been in the past. We've got a new wedge now, so I'm, I actually don't have these numbers written down. So. Oh, these are, the this last, is the last kind of piece of the puzzle last here. Last piece of the puzzle right here, yeah. That's going a little further. 100 yards. Yep. Plenty of spin on it too. A lot of spin. Probably more spin than you need, actually. All right. Well, I think you hit 95 yards more than once. Right. I feel like it's a 95 yard club. The first swing I might have swung a little too hard at. Yeah. Well, uh, look at those three. I mean, those you had three there, yeah. kind of the one that went to 100 essentially, and then you yep. had 95 basically yards hit on the dot three times. And if we go to the table here, we can see, you know, 96 yards is about the average then with that one kind of the further one. But I'd say 95 yards is about kind of what your club is going to produce with that swing there. Yep. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit of an area I've still got to work on the next couple of days. Is, is probably the, the 60 yardages and mm -hmm. pitching wedge yardages. I'm pretty happy with the, with the 52 and 56. Sure. But mm -hmm. fine tuning this. And I didn't know exactly what this was. I, I usually say it's around about 95. Yeah. Um, 90, 95 with my 10, 30 swing, but going just a little bit further. Mm. Nine o'clock is usually around about 80, so we'll see how close that is. Okay. It's going so far. Hmm. A little further on that one, 89. Yep. A little bit better on that one. Yep. All right, That's, that one seems to be about, what, seven to eight yards further, roughly? Yeah, it's about 87, 88 yards, it seemed like what the distance I mean, was. Pretty tight carried. dispersion there. I mean, they're all right. pretty similar golf shots. It was just, uh, you know, about seven to eight yards further than you expect your carry to be there with mm -hmm. that club. So, um, one, of mean, my, one of my things that I've, in my, in my swing, that, that holds me back on trying to feel like a nine o'clock goes a little shorter, is I've always had quite a bit, this, this earlier hinge in my swing, which caused that club to go a little further. 
So I'm going to need you just to assess that a sure. little bit here just to make sure that I don't hinge too early, which causes me to take the club too far right. back. Which then can yeah. help you get a little bit more speed. I guess the speed that It you helps really me get want. speed, yeah. but, but you don't I'm want getting that too much shot. speed. Yeah. I want to actually dial it down a little bit more the wedges. Mm -hmm. yep. Right, exactly. And then, you know, I, you always preach in, how many times have you preached in fitting videos, you know, the wedges are your scoring clubs. And so I imagine part of the whole short game preparation for you the next few weeks, is going to be dialing in even these yardages, which may not be considered short game, but you know, this is how you make birdies and you're going to need birdies, I imagine. So this would be a, a nice, I mean, good to, I'm sure for you to know that you have this to, to work on and dial in. Yeah. And normally when I'm practicing outside, 80% of my practice is within 125 yards. So right. Wedges and putting and chipping. Right. Well, that's, if you think about golf, yeah. how many, what percentage of your shots on the course are within 125 yards? Probably 80% yeah. ish or more. So um, with that said, I know you want to put yourself under the gun a little bit. So what we can kind of do here is just see, you know, how many times, how many shots it takes you to hit the carry number on the dot that I give you. Uh, and I'll, I'll be in that range. Uh, but I, I'm thinking to the nearest whole carry yard. So okay. 112.5 would be 113. Uh, but uh, I guess give me a little bit of a, a lenience, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll be we'll be generous with it. So. Yeah. Um, what with that said, are you thinking here? With, with that said, I kind of want to start with something that you hit a lot today, okay. which was 110 yards. 110 so yards? Start with 110 yards. So right. give me, tell me what club to give you. Let's go 9 o'clock 50, no, hang on. I'm going to think about it. Yeah, 9 o'clock 52. 52, okay. Yep. There's now, that. as we mentioned, we've got two options here. Right. We've got the 9 mm -hmm. o'clock 52 or we've got the 10, 30, 56. Yep. And you did say you opt for the 9 o'clock more often than not here. Yep. So. And this is, um, you said 110, 110 yards carry, carry distance, yes. right? Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, 111. Come on. Might be close. Thinks he's got it. Ooh. How's the, how about average? 110.0 and two swings? 110.0 average after two is pretty good. <laughs> I did notice on that one, the ball speed dropped a little bit, so I kind of yeah. thought you might have it. Come on. <laughs> 109.4. We give that to you? I would give that to me. Okay, we'll give it to you. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's within 0 0.6. Yes. We could be here all day. Yeah, we, that's true. That's true. All, all right. right, now what do you got? Now I want to do something a little bit different, a little bit trickier, because it's not, it wasn't, totally in your ballpark. Uh oh. And it's going to be, I got 93 yards. 93 yards. So it's in the ballpark, but it wasn't yep. something you hit, you know, a bunch of it on uh, in yep. testing today. So uh, I'm going to make this a little challenging on myself. Pass me the 56. 56. Okay. So this is going to be, uh, now we talked about nine o'clock and, and 1030. Okay. This, you could add in 730 as well. 730. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be close to about a 730 swing for me. And it's something I've been working on a little bit. So obviously it's a little bit shorter on the, on the takeaway mm -hmm. here. 93 yards. 93. Nope, a little short. Ooh, just a little short. I can see the difference though between that and the nine o'clock swing. Yeah. That have gotta be close. <laughs> that's pretty darn good. Yeah. That's pretty darn good. Give one more go. All if right. you don't get it here, we'll give that one to you. There we go. All right. Not bad. A couple really good ones there. Yeah, this took me a little <clears> to <throat> adjust, mm -hmm. but yeah, those last two are basically 93 yards. All right. Now, can I go back towards your, the club you wanted to work on a little bit more after initial hitting? 135 yards. <laughs> Don't know if I remember that yardage now. <laughs> Imagine okay. you want this club. Yes. <laughs> it's the only club that can get me there. <laughs> so I'm going to try and hit a 1030 swing. Okay. Is what this is going to be. Since it was going a little further. Look at that dispersion. That's a lot of, it's a beautiful painting. That's what that is. <laughs> well, nice and straight. I like it. Ooh. Close. Pretty good start. Pretty good start. Why does this club go so far? 
Come on. Ooh. So close. Give it one more here. I mean, come on. I mean, you're, you're 134 yards since we carry. That's, you're, you're tapping that in for birdie. So. <laughs> Might be a little short. Yep. Just a little. All right. Well. So I know this club is something I've got to look at. Mm -hmm. Whether it's loft. Maybe I even checked the loft on all the other clubs to see what they're actually at. Because I only just got these wedges and I did not spec check them. So okay. it'll be interesting to see if they're obviously exact. This I usually have at about 30, 47 degrees of loft. And then I've got okay. 52, 56, 60. Okay. But so I think, you know, based on this, I know if I was, I mean, if I'm a spectator, I see this and I'd go, I mean, I trust you from about, from 90 to 125 yards, I feel like you're pretty dialed in. I mean, yep. that, that's kind of your money zone, it feels like, after watching you hit these shots. And I think it's just getting that zone from about what, 130, 135 to, you know, your nine iron essentially in there kind of is, is the next part to dial in for you, I think. But... It's Better than even the shorter shots, like when you start getting kind of like 70 and 80. Right, of course. Just making sure I can do like the, 10, the 7.30 and the 9 o'clock swing with my, with my 60 there mm -hmm. too. Sure. Well, yep. I mean, I think you got a lot accomplished here though. I mean, you're kind of a little bit more dialed in and then you also, have, like you said, you've got that plan in place to go down into Texas and dial things in. But other than that, this is going to be the last video of the series until you compete. So yep. um, we're, we're excited for that. It's going to be fun to follow you. Yeah, I've got about three or four days of practice. I'm going to work with my coach here for three or four days before I fly down. Um, so I'm excited. Obviously, we'll get everything dialed in by then. I'll be very, very confident in everything. And I'm excited to go compete. Um, it's going to be fun to represent Second Swing, mm -hmm. to represent Minnesota. Um, coming out of you know the winter here, it hasn't been ideal preparation. Right. We really don't even have any courses open up right now. Oh, I know. Um, which is the worst thing about being living up here and having right. met so early on in the season. But I'm as ready as I probably can be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm excited to compete. Usually I come out really excited and come out pretty hot and feel pretty good about my, my game. So swing's feeling good. I'm excited to compete. Can't wait to have everyone watch. As a reminder, it's on the Golf Channel. Yeah. So uh, if you viewers are out there watching, um, it's going to be on the Golf Channel on the 17th to the 21st, each mm -hmm. day from 2 to 5 p.m. They're going to be broadcasting the back nine of the Fezio Foothold course. Sweet. And then, of course, uh, we'll also be posting updates you know, on the Second Swing social media channels as well. So follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we'll also be posting stuff on the YouTube community page as well. But, Thomas, thanks for taking us on this journey so far. It's been fun to follow along, fun to watch you prep. And now, uh, now it's go time. So we're excited right. to, to follow along, and uh, we're wishing you the best of luck. Yep. Can't wait to get there. Thanks for watching, everyone.